can't believe you did all this. I mean, you really made the place sparkle like magic. Hey, you're so romantic. Well, it pales in comparison to Max Mises' radiance. Smelly. You're off for birthday greetings. No, oh, yeah, I just thought. Never mind. Thank you. It's definitely a surprise. Because the person you hope to see is your man friend, Dr. Hunter. Hi. Um, Do you know who I am? Matt. Good. You're an ICU. Do you know how you got here? Matt, Lisa. Yeah, she chloroformed you and she threw you off the boat. Yeah, you washed up on shore and Spinelli found you. No, 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 it... it That's okay, it's okay. It, hey, hey, hey. Crazy bitch is gone. You don't have to worry about Niles ever again. Excuse me. Were you absent when the Academy had sensitivity training? Uh, Lulu. I mean, in case you hadn't noticed, because you're blinded by ambition, he is recovering from a gunshot wound that took out part of his lung. Yeah, I'm aware of so that. So are you gunning for Rookie of the Week or something? You can wait to hammer him with questions while he's in a hospital? Okay. She's fierce. Yeah, maybe. I, I asked Vidya to come. You kept that. <laughs> of course I did. Yeah? Not sure why. Memories, I guess. I'm gonna help myself. Yeah, I can see that. So, I just got off a plane uh -huh. from Europe. Okay, I'm not even gonna ask about that. Just put it away, and we'll never mention it again. Hail to the conquering writer. Uh, uh, Fresh uh, off her first book, how was it? Exhausting. I was shuttled about, subjected to endless parades of sycophants and hucksters and parasites. Are you here to tell me that you're done with it? Are you kidding me? I loved every second of it. No, I am here to tell you that I, um, I ran into Brenda when I was in Italy. And we had quite the little chat about you. Really? Mm -hmm. Not interested. Don't speak too soon. She asked about you. You sure you don't want to know what was said? I was speaking at a symposium on women writing in the detective genre when, imagine my surprise, up walks Alec and Brenda. Brenda had seen an announcement about the panel and she came to congratulate me. Naturally, my first response was one of suspicion because Brenda never had any use for me while she was here, but it quickly became clear that she really wanted to talk about you. Well, it's none of her business because, uh, you know, she made her choice. The funny thing was is that I didn't realize it was Brenda at first. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And part of that was because it was context, you know. I mean, someone is not where they are supposed to be, so you don't recognize them as being who they are. This is excellent, Scott. Are you just going to keep talking, or are you going to finish it at some point? The other part was that Brenda was dressed completely differently. Uh -huh. Colors. A nice dress with heels. She didn't look like a fugitive anymore. Right. Of course, even when she was wearing those ridiculous shirts with the sleeves, you know, down to hair, she right. managed to look spectacular, which is obscenely unfair to the rest of us. Anyone else would have been arrested for crimes against fashion. And then there was the boy. Children grow so quickly at that age. Uh -huh. Alec is a real kid. Mm -hmm. He's a little person who can carry on an intelligent conversation. Of course, he's very precocious. We know where he gets that. I don't care about what you're talking about, Diane, so why do you keep talking? So the three of us went walking into the Piazza di Pietra, and uh, Brenda was telling me how right. she's really cutting back on her work and her charity events so that she can devote more time to being a mother. And I must say, it agrees with her. She positively glows with love for herself. What do I, what do I have to do, seriously, to stop you? from rambling about the something real, I don't want to hear about. real surprise about Brenda, though, is um, how relaxed she is. Yeah. How at peace. How happy. She made the right decision, leaving you, Sonny. And I'm here to tell you with authority that Brenda's not pining away. That's what you've been wanting to do, right? That's the arrow you've been wanting to sling at me. You feel better? Good. 
guzzle up my liquor, okay? And get the hell out of oh, here. Oh, Sonny. I'm just getting started. You don't look so good, Pop. I feel worse. This hole in my gut is causing trouble I didn't see coming. A little like that, that bitch who inflicted the damage. Still trying to figure out, was it intentional or just dumb luck that the 2 by 4 Lisa hit you with came equipped with a rusty nail? We need to get you looked at. You could come down with lockjaw or something worse, not that the silence wouldn't be golden. <laughs> you better be nice to me. I know things. So do I. I know you woke a deranged woman out of a coma. How's that working out for you, by the way, huh? You have to rub it in at a time like this. Any sight of her? Nothing. Hmm? Don't expect there will be. Don't know. I could use some help. Maybe try that quack louse over at Mercy. <laughs> well, he'd be better than nothing. No go. Malpractice suit, he killed himself, or at least that's what I'm assuming. Gotta get somebody in-house. I got someone. You did? Who? Let's just say somebody with something very big to hide. You stabilize for now. So I'm just gonna stay with you for a little bit. Keep an eye on you. I'm gonna talk. Don't feel obligated to talk back. Just want you to know that you're not alone. You don't have to worry about Lisa anymore. Live by the sword, die by the sword. She got exactly what was coming to her. You know, the one person that I would have wanted to have on my arm that night and to share that entire celebration with was the one person that I told not to show up. Maxie. Infuriating. Glorious. Maxie. This is really sweet, Spinelli. I can tell that you put a lot of effort and trouble into everything. And I appreciate it. I really do, but... Anymore or lead you on, so I'm just gonna be brutally honest. You may speak your heart without regard to my feelings. No, never without regard. Okay, here goes. I spent the entire day turning down dinner invitations for my friends and family because I really wanted to spend the night with Matt. I don't know why. He's been ten different kinds of rude to me and throwing Elizabeth into the mix. It's borderline unforgivable, but. I guess, lucky for Matt, I'm, I'm a bigger person, and, uh... Well, which is not to say that he doesn't owe me. I mean, he does. Big time, and I intend to collect. I mean, he's definitely doing the woman behind the man feature. The least he can do is put me back in Kate's good graces. <laughs> Got me a gift, by the way. Kate? Yeah, a really awesome gift. That is very nice. Nice? It's an Aries Gainsbourg. Oh. I mean, it cost a small fortune. All I could do is look at the catalogs and try not to drool over it. Kate, she just hands it over, which is really weird and, and unexpected because she's been really well, exasperated with me lately. I don't know. Why would she just hand over an expensive, highly coveted bag? Maybe because it's your birthday? No, Kate doesn't do birthdays. Well, perhaps it's best not to look the proverbial gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> I guess whatever ulterior motive Kate had, it's lucky for me because I get to keep the bag. Precisely. No, okay, Spinelli, the point is that I really want to spend the night with Matt. Did you ever ponder fate? Um, I, I don't ponder much. Well, it just seems to me that fate's been a big part of our relationship. Even as recent as party night. Okay, you've lost me. Well, I opted to take you on a midnight picnic rather than delivering you to the boat, and that turned out to be for the best because, well, I mean, let's face it, Lisa Niles is not your biggest fan, so... Who knows what would have happened had you run into her and her quiver of syringes. I have gone out on a limb to get you this position, so where the hell are you? Fair warning, don't screw me. I need you to talk me out of telling the truth. 